All right, so the main topic of the day is we're going to talk about LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, you would often say, is the um, professional social network. So this isn't the network where you're going to share funny cat pictures with your family. This is the one where you're going to share funny cat pictures with your boss. Um, and I'm not joking because they've recently added the ability for you to share funny cat pictures with each other. Well, that's them trying to tap into the zeitgeist of the other social networks in that when you can send each other pictures and little animations and emoji. You do that in Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook. And for some reason, LinkedIn, LinkedIn said, me too. And now when you message each other, you could send in literally little cat drawings, but they're professional cats because they've got business suits and hats and uh, a little coffee mug that says boss and stuff like that. So um, the, let me put the then the professional in quotes because um, that's a hilarious thing. Uh, I, I remember tweeting about it. This was probably last year. And I said, oh, on LinkedIn, now I can send a, I can, uh, I can message Bill Gates uh, with some funny cat pictures. Well, um, OK, the professional social network. Um, usually, the uses for this one uh, are professional in terms of um, usually sort of job hunting or network building. Um, although, of course, Facebook trying to get their hands into everything, Facebook itself also has various aspects of uh, job hunting, and I'm sure they're going to increase that. Um, you know, all of these companies have to be like sharks, constantly moving or they die. And so Facebook might encroach on LinkedIn's territory uh, soon. Uh, who knows? Uh, so LinkedIn, however, has done very well for itself. I have to, I forgot to look up the latest stats, but yeah, LinkedIn also has around like 500 million users, 300. Somewhere around there, we'll look up the stats later, but somewhere around 300 to 500 million users. Well, that's bigger than uh, Twitter, that's bigger than Snapchat, that's bigger than Pinterest, not as big as Facebook or Instagram, maybe on par with Instagram, not as big as Facebook, not as big as YouTube. Again, we're going to cover YouTube in this class. Um, because a lot of people don't quite think about YouTube as a social network, um, but it's a social network, definitely, and it is also a marketing tool like everything else that we talk about. Uh, so it's pretty obvious. Uh, we'll see the aspect of it for the job hunting and the network building. Um, this can also be used as a person or a business. You can have a profile for a person, and you can have a page for a business. Um, I sort of feel that for the business page, it's I think they need to polish it more than the other networks. I think the other networks, especially Facebook, interestingly, did a better job of setting up business pages on their network, even though Facebook started as a personal thing. And even though LinkedIn started always as a professional thing, they meant it as a person-to-person -person job hunting networking thing. And I feel they sort of kind of shoehorned in the business aspect of things, the business page aspect of things, and it's not as polished as it could be, surprisingly. So we'll, we'll see how that is. Um, as most of these things free to set up, but the best um, features are paid. So uh, LinkedIn was one of the first ones to have completely like, um, not, not exactly ads, but you would pay for the professional version of LinkedIn. And that one's a, a little more expensive than you would think compared to regular ads and such, but we'll see all of this in just a moment. So how many of you have a personal or business LinkedIn account at the moment? 
most people. Okay, good. Um, if you don't have one, uh, you'll be able to create one. Uh, if you do have one, you can use your current one. But as I've said in previous days, uh, just for the learning process, I would create one, I would make it up, and then we could use it and then delete it, and then whatever we learn from that, you can apply to your real one. So um, let's, let's go over to LinkedIn.com. Say that again? No, I believe you, sh you can put in a fake one and it will let you get in no problem. But before that, let me just show something here. Um, they change this every once in a while, but um, I tried to do it and it didn't let me. Uh, I was going to show you before I logged in, I was going to show you um, that you could. Uh, you could look at my profile for a moment. I tried to look at it, but then it says log in. So uh, these networks, these networks know that the value of a user is when they're logged in. So I'm noticing that, and it, and, and Pinterest has been one of the most annoying ones that I've ever seen when I teach this. That um, you you have to have been logged into Pinterest to see anything and you try to look at anything and it pops up right away sign in and you try to close that window and you do something else and then it pops up again sign in and then with LinkedIn I used to be able to just preview my account there before logging in and I tried to do it now and it says log in so I don't know if you see that as well if you try to go to my account linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos I'm trying to look at it and it says yeah sign in so I can't quite show it to you but I was just going to show you a preview of what an account looks like and you probably already have some in, some knowledge of what it looks like but notice here I have an address on LinkedIn that is this linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos by default like most of these networks um, you have to you have to claim this name because by default I, I think I would have gotten something like Victor-Campos-Numbers to delineate me or differentiate me from every other Victor Campos on, on LinkedIn, and there are apparently a lot of them in Brazil. So um, like all of the networks we're going to note here, you want to claim your short name or your vanity URL on LinkedIn as soon as you can. Uh, the default is a bunch of numbers and gibberish. Which won't look good on a business card or an email signature. After all, it's a professional network. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not that obvious compared to the other networks. I'll show you uh, how to claim your short name. And when we get into this in a moment, I'm going to say right away, use LinkedIn, I'll just write Lynn, use LinkedIn selfishly. Not selflessly, selfishly. Use this network in a selfish manner. Selfish in terms of what's in it for me, not you. In terms of, LinkedIn is supposed to be a way to connect people to people, like every network. LinkedIn is a way to share content people to people, like every other network. But the difference here is you have to approve the connections. LinkedIn is about approving connections. A one-to-one -one connection. Most other networks are not. They're a one-to-many connection. Twitter, I can create a Twitter account and I can have 40 people follow me. That doesn't mean then I have to follow those 40 accounts back. 
I don't have to reciprocate on Twitter and follow those people back. They've chosen to follow me because my content is valuable, my, my tweets are valuable, it's valuable to be connected to me on Twitter. But I don't have to follow them back. Um, Facebook business pages are the same way that I could have 40 people following my business page on Facebook but I don't have to follow those customers back it's one to many uh, classic personal Facebook was and is a one-to-one -one in that oh my old high school friend wants to connect with me uh, John Smith sent you a friend request then I can approve or deny uh, so for people Facebook is that one-to-one -one connection I approve or disapprove disapprove the connection but almost every other network also Instagram I have a business on Instagram and I've got 5,000 followers I'm not gonna follow those 5,000 customers back it's gonna overwhelm me face our uh, LinkedIn is is like that in that someone chooses to connect with me and I approve it or deny it and I'm saying <laughs> use it selfishly in terms of is it valuable to for you to follow back that person if not don't connect or approve the connection so I, I showed you my LinkedIn address a moment ago and most likely if you send me a request I won't approve it uh, for two reasons usually I don't approve the connections of students because that's a uh, that could be a conflict especially at the other college where there's actual grades and if I connect with students and then they're in my class and then we're friends on social media and I give them a bad grade they're like why did you give me a bad grade we're friends well um, that's one reason I don't connect with students and the other is again I do use it selfishly I'm not going to approve you know I know people that use LinkedIn just like the other networks I've got 500 connections I've got 730 connections and friends on LinkedIn well are they really that valuable or did you just simply connect with your relative because they're your relative what value does that relative have to you and your business endeavors they're in you're in completely different spheres of influence and that relative is never gonna buy your product they already bought it one time as a courtesy but are they gonna be a future customer no so unfortunately then you're in a hard uh, you're in a tough place because you've you've connected on LinkedIn as a courtesy but now I'm telling you as the instructor only connect uh, if it's valuable to you well are you gonna keep that connection that's not worth it or you're gonna unfriend them and then hurt their feelings <laughs> so just think in terms of future connections only approve connections where you are gonna profit or not not monetarily always profit but connections where you're gonna profit in and that's in terms of will that connection help me sell something spread the word uh, help me connect to a more valuable connection or person friend of a friend uh, on LinkedIn I can choose to try to connect to anyone but LinkedIn will give you a pop-up that say why are you trying to connect with them how do you know them if you're trying to connect with a person that you don't have any real connection most likely you won't it'll just be rejected automatically but if you have a connection to a friend of that person you're trying to connect to, that entryway there is enough perhaps to make the connection. Or at least the request to try to connect. Yes? So I have a question. Um, why, if you don't have an account and you get a request from someone that does have an account, um, why is that? Well, what happens is if you get the request, that's LinkedIn then sort of inviting you to create an account. So you get that notification, and if you click to follow the link, it will then say sign in or sign up. And then, then you create the account, and then the connection will happen. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. How do you determine the 
determine, I had somebody set mine up years ago. I had an intern at my office. Mm. How do I determine when you set up a business uh, profile or a personal profile? That's going to depend on how they set it up. But once we sign in here, when I sign in, I'll show you when I've signed in with the with the um, personal account, I have a little screen where then I can go view my business account. So if it got set up in that they used one email to create the personal and the business when they're connected. They may have used an email to create the business one separately from the personal one, I don't know. During the break and such, we can take a, we can take a look. So I don't know exactly how they set it up, but the default is usually you create a personal one first. So you might have a personal one instead of a business one. And we'll talk about how to, how to address that in, in just a moment. So like Facebook, you create a personal profile first, then add a business page to it. So a, uh, a person creates or founds the business, and then um, you can have other people also contribute to it. And um, I think the big strength of um, LinkedIn is the person to the person. Rather than a business to a, to a person, I think, and from my experience with clients, I think person to person seems to work a little better. I'm going to say uh, opinion here. Use LinkedIn person to person instead of business to person. But depending on your business, you'll pick the right one. You'll pick the right one as you gain more knowledge of this, of course. Uh, but just as a short answer uh, in the beginning here. So here's what I mean in, in real life. So I've got Victor's Bakery. Fictional business, Victor's Bakery. I'm trying to get customers to come to my bakery. I'm trying to get people to come to my Main Street location. So instead of creating a business page on LinkedIn and trying to get customers that way, I create a page for Victor Campos. I create a page for myself and I'll fill it all out about my business in my personal account. I'll show you how in a, in a moment. But then I use myself as sort of like I'm the advertisement. I'm the I'm what's trying to sell people on coming to my business. I'm using myself as the spokesperson for my business and therefore I'm using myself as a person to try to connect with the people that could be the customers. Instead of trying to get the Victor's Bakery page to connect to customers, well, I don't, I don't, I'm looking at it on the other side. I'm a person. I don't care about this business trying to market to me. But maybe I will care about a person trying to market to me. I'm trying, I'm seeing that Victor Campos, the owner of Victor's Bakery, is connecting with me about their business. That might work more depending on various factors, but that might work more person to person instead of a business to a person. So a uh, short answer, use yourself as the, <clears throat> as the spokesperson of the business to create connections to get customers. This doesn't apply for everyone, of course. Um, but for most of us that might have a small business or you know it's our business I'm gonna use myself as the spokesperson uh, again that it's not one size fits all but so let's say I, I'm I don't want to put myself out there as the person I don't I, I value my privacy and I don't want uh, you know that sort of thing uh, for me to be um, that well known I want my business uh, to be no not me so Again, that depends on person to person and your goals and what your business is and all that. Yes? Is this person to person the way to do a, a, a use the word post 
to a group. So if I want to target small CPA firms using the end of the consulting services too, is there a way for me to create content and then get it all of it, all of it? LinkedIn does have groups. LinkedIn has groups like uh, Facebook and communities like Google Plus. So yes, as a person or a business, but usually as a person, you're going to get into these groups of CPAs, uh, of you know, tech workers, whatever, and congregate on a topic and talk about it and post and try to build connections in that group. Yeah, and it's going to be very similar to uh, Google Plus in terms of these are moderated and have rules so you can't just join I can't just join seven communities all about food and start posting my stuff there right away uh, I probably will get my content deleted or I will get kicked out of the group because I didn't read the rules I didn't introduce myself I'm just being way too salesmanship about it but LinkedIn does have groups that we can use which I think are very valuable and Yes, you can create multiple multiple business pages connected to one personal profile. Yeah. Now again, yes, you can be multiple people, but remember, all of these rules that no one reads and everyone agrees to basically says you're not going to abuse it that way. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. I'm just being a little glib, but yes. Um, yeah. And they are available in getting connections. Different entities. Different business personalities. Different DBAs. Okay, and um, I'll just put it up here as well. Um, one personal profile can have multiple, can have or manage, can create or manage um, multiple business pages. Yes, with a professional cost. No, it's all it's all free to set up, but just like Facebook, you get the most out of it when you pay, and then uh, the prices on Facebook or LinkedIn are a little higher than those kinds of prices. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Um, we're going to take our first break, but what I would like you to do is either sign in to an existing account or go through the process of creating an account so that I don't have to walk you through those steps during the break 1035 you can either sign in or sign up if you're having any trouble call me over but let's take our first break it's 1035 we'll be back at 1045 either sign in or sign up for an account <laughs>